Yes, OK. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, the Relink uh, project. Um, so my topic was uh, how we will transition towards a sustainable relationship with data. And, but first of all, I can talk a bit about Relink and our goal. So the Relink project consists of a group of four students, including myself at the University of Oslo. But we are also working in collaboration with several uh, other professional research teams from different universities in both Scandinavia and the United Kingdom. Uh, and our goal for this project has been to empower the users to utilize their rights. Uh, we also want to teach the users about the importance of their data. And we also want to help um, in the struggle against the black box issues we have found. And uh, finally, the overarching goal here is to help change our society's relationship with data. So first of all, we should ask ourselves, why do we need to transition? And to answer that question, we have to look at the situation as it is today. Because these days, several big tech companies in the world have some highly questionable legal practices when it comes to what they do with your data. Uh, one of the most well-known cases of this is the Cambridge Analytica scandal. And that was about uh, how companies could use your personal data in order to influence elections to a certain degree. But there are also other scandals, such as the Twitter scandal of 2019 and another scandal here, with Google being fined by France in 2020. So there are countless examples of this that I could mention. But the point is that this is pretty common. And also, in our own research, together with uh, the professionals from Relink, we have found that um, data subjects or users of various smart devices in the smart home don't really understand what or how the data flow works. And so therefore, it becomes a black box issue where the data goes in, never to be seen again. And finally, we feel that uh, surveillance capitalism is emerging as a new wicked problem as it's becoming a problem that is incredibly difficult to solve or manage. So what is surveillance capitalism? Well, the term itself was coined by Shoshana Zuboff and uh, it describes a paradigm where the commodity for sale is your personal data and this data is generally obtained through mass surveillance of the internet. But it can also be acquired through detailed analysis. Like they can get even more data based on the data that they already have by putting two and two together. And suddenly they know just about everything about you. Uh, so this has kind of been a focus for our our project. Uh, and if we want to look at how this isn't sustainable, then we could take a look at the UN sustainability goals, as we've already seen several times. But in uh, my experience, most people, when they think of sustainability, they immediately think of the environmental and the economic factors. But there's also the social aspect, which is very important. And within the social aspect, we find uh, goals such as goal number 16, which is about peace, justice, and strong institutions. This is the goal we have focused on since this was most, the most relevant to our project. And uh, this goal has several sub-goals, like we see here with uh, goal 16.3, about promoting the rule of law, and point 16.10, about ensuring public access to information. Now, as I mentioned, with the surveillance capitalism and dubious data practices, the rule of law isn't exactly in the ideal place. Um, sometimes the law is outright broken by these companies, and other times they operate in legal gray areas, which isn't really how the law is supposed to function. Uh, also, there's, uh, of course, 
the second goal here of uh, ensuring public access to information. And we found, as I said, that um, the data subjects don't really understand uh, anything concerning the data analysis processes. And so the right to information here and the right to protection of fundamental freedoms such as privacy are very important. Uh, now, when it comes to actually having a ground to start with, when it comes to this uh, sustainability goal, the GDPR is very irrelevant. Now, due to several, uh, a lot, or well, a lot of discourse on the challenges of the GDPR, one can argue how effective it actually is, but it does provide a good starting ground for us. Uh, and it does provide some fundamental rights. Uh, now these are of course aimed primarily at uh, citizens of the EU, but they also, uh, through their greater reach, sometimes help out people outside of the EU as well. Uh, and two, again, two central uh, rules here are the third chapter, Article 13, which provides the right to information, again, and the um, third chapter and Article 17, which provides the right to erasure. Now, both of these, again, in our research, we found that no common or <laughs> data subject knows about this. And so when people don't know about these rights that they have, they're not going to use them. And this is kind of something that we've been wanting to address. But when it comes to our design course and what we've been doing so far, that has def different, uh, different uh, aspects to it. So we've been having uh, workshops, like uh, previously mentioned, where we've been using a lot of the design methods which other groups have mentioned. Uh, and that's been very helpful to us to kind of approach the issue from many different angles. And also for us, we've been using a lot of mapping because we found the whole situation to be such a broad topic and it helps us kind of understand all the different aspects that we should be looking at. We've also been doing a lot of research, uh, both on our own and also reading up on research from others. Uh, we've been coming up with theories of change, like uh, you see in the corner there. It's a bit hard to see, but that's okay. Um, also, we've been consulting with uh, experts uh, from our own research project from different parts, uh, as well as uh, communicating with some users to try and get all perspectives. And finally, we've been also doing some prototyping, which is I'm going to show you now just quickly. Uh, so our first prototype here was one based on, um, based on rating various smart devices that you might have in your smart home uh, so that consumers can make better choices when they buy them. And I should also quickly mention that we did start most of our ideas with just simple paper sketches in order to communicate our ideas with each other, which some of them we then further developed into wireframes like this one. Uh, but yes, this one, uh, here you can see some more of how it would uh, potentially work, where you can find devices and then you can rate them on a scale to help other users uh, decide whether or not they should get it. But with this concept we ran into several problems with uh, how a rating system would work and what the users actually understand here and kind of the metrics behind it so we ended up uh, moving past this idea. And so we went over to the second prototype. Um, this one is still undergoing development so this is a bit frag fragmented perhaps, but anyway, uh, here we show or we can see a big uh, sort of map and this is supposed to illustrate how uh, this system that we're building could uh, map out and show the user all, everyone who has a stake in their data in order to make it easier for them to understand this complex topic. And then if you click on one of them, you can learn more about them uh, by seeing what exact data this um, entity might have on you. Uh, and further, by clicking on the attributes, you can learn 
more specifically what that would mean, like what exact data might they have. Uh, and so here is another con part of the concept where you can see what uh, or how many companies have specific points of your data. Uh, and this right here is uh, going into the final point of the uh, prototype where the user would go through a sort of um, questionnaire type of thing. This is still ongoing. But, uh, and then the system would help them come up with a data plan which suits that particular user in order for them to be able to actually en navigate this environment. Uh, and so when they've done that, the system would then come up with a data plan for them, which can then be implemented universally across the devices that the users might have. And that way they can utilize their rights. And also, I don't have a picture of it right now, but uh, we're also thinking of adding some other aspects to the prototype when it comes to uh, uh, information from these tech companies and kind of uh, more directly utilizing the specific rights of the GDPR. But that's it for now. Thank you. <laughs>